Hey everyone, welcome to a new video and some of the stuff that I think will help you climb a lot smoother in the mess that is early season ranked. I don't tend to do a ton of guides anymore, honestly. I was mostly like tier list videos and analysis and patch notes and stuff, but this will definitely help you get at least to like low diamond. I put it into six things that you should focus on a little bit more and it's going to follow some of the GPI on Mobilitics as well. I'll link that down below if you want to follow along with the video, but it will give you a more personal score on how good you are at these things I'm going to talk about and where you actually need to improve improve as a player. Like for me, I need to farm a lot better. The first thing that we're going to look at today is your mental, your attitude, especially when it comes to comebacks. Some people like this and some people don't, but the game is never over anymore in season nine because of the new bounty system. The part that people don't really like is that kills themselves don't mean as much. It's mostly what you get after them. Like if you can take something afterwards, if you solo kill your lane opponent, but you base straight after, like it's not that great. You're actually getting a bounty and punished for playing well. Kill gold, you can get back from the bounty basically which leads to massive comebacks. Imagine the enemy AD carry cashing in two bounties, getting like 2,000 gold. That is a massive swing. You cannot get back all the objectives or CS you take after the kill though. That is kind of my point. But because the scoreboard also now shows it as well, you know who to focus and naturally that makes you target them and make plays and stuff without really realizing to cash it in. Basically, one big team fight can get you three bounties and suddenly make your team rich. And that is why the game is never over. I know a lot of people don't like this system, but it does make it a lot more even. And so mental attitude is way more important this season than it has been before. Dying in lane or anything like that, it doesn't really matter as much because you can get that gold back. One thing that you can't get back are CS leads. So this is my second point. CS is just way more important now in Season 9. If you get a kill, it's not a massive deal. But if you have a 30 to 40 CS lead, that is a really big deal. That means that even if you die with your bounty, you will still be really far ahead of the enemy and be able to keep snowballing your lead. On the flip side as well, if you're playing a weaker champion, like I do this with Kaiser sometimes, if you can have equal CS, even if you're down a couple of kills, it really doesn't matter. Kill gold, you can get back. CS gold, not so much, if that makes sense. There are three main areas for farming properly. You have your early game or your lane phase, your mid game, and then your late game. Mid game is just as important as early because that is the phase where the enemy is probably going to cash in a few bounties and you want to be able to keep your gold lead. As I said before, I highly recommend you open up your Mobilistic GPI for this one so you can follow along as it has like a proper breakdown of each. So for me, I'm good early game, right? I'm weak mid though, and that is where I sometimes lose my lead. If you click on farming efficiency, you'll actually see this even more. I have a good CS per minute when I'm actually farming, but I lose a lot because I die, I base badly, and a little bit because I gank. For me personally, I would need to catch waves more, base at better times, and try out to die to improve my farm and keep my leads, and that is how I keep a lead in Season 9. If you're sometimes struggling to win even with good CS as well, I'd personally look at the snowboarding part under aggression as well. That will help you secure your wins when you're ahead. Number 3, we're going to talk about tower plates, and another thing that they can't get back is the tower plate gold, and this is a huge amount sitting right there to be taken, about 3 kills worth of gold. So if you get a kill in lane, it's not that big, we've established that already, but to get a few plays afterwards, and that is where you can get your lead. The easiest games I have had in this season genuinely have been taking a tower early and getting all of that gold without losing any on my team. On the flip side, the hardest games that snowball out of control where I can't recover are when the enemy takes a few towers early and builds up a massive lead. Pushing is way more valuable in the lane phase for sure, and winning lane for me now means that you should really get some of the plates before they fall off. It's not just enough to get a few kills. As a solo laner, this is a bit harder, but it is more rewarding as well. It's half a kills worth of gold every single time you take a plate. That is where the kill comes in, really. You get a kill, you get that gold, you get a plate afterwards. In theory, you've just made every single kill in lane worth more than first blood now. Number four, I want to talk about dragon buffs. Dragons are way better than you probably think right now, and especially the first few in the game. The first dragon of each type that you take was buffed, and it now respawns faster. It gives 100 gold for the kill, and it gives double the starting experience, so it is really strong. Just in terms of buffs for Infernal, that is a 10% bonus now to AD and AP. Mountain is a 16% damage bonus to objectives, uh, like towers and baron and stuff like that. Uh, your air is 3% move speed, but ocean is now 6% bonus regeneration, and that is the important important part. Ocean, in my opinion, is the best early game dragon that you should fight for. Probably just as much as an Infernal. Mountain and Air are much better when you're ahead in the game, but Ocean is the king of laning. It gives so much regen, especially after the buff. It's insane, and that is why you really want to get it. It helps every lane survive and keep their mana and health up. If you're against a Pog lane, it's even stronger. It will help you versus a difficult lane as well. And the best part is that people don't really know how good it is. Before you say it, not a lot of people watch my videos, so not everybody is going to know after this, but they'll fight 100% 
100% for an Infernal Drake, right? But they won't really be that fast for an Ocean, which means you're free to nab it. The earlier you take these as well, the more of these early buffs that you can get. And you really do want to focus it down. If your bot lane or your mid lane is pushing the enemies to base, then taking Dragon is not that difficult. It's not very risky. And it's honestly way stronger than you realize. And it will help you win a lot more. Number five is the other objective, Rift Held. It is the way to win a game right now and use the lead that you already have. So say you have a five kill lead as a team, right? Two of you probably have bounties, which will eventually get cashed in because everybody ints at some point. But while you have the lead, get your Rift Herald. They can't fight you yet because you're stronger, right? And Rift Herald will extend that lead even more. And honestly, Rift is stronger than Baron that early into the game. What I do is I go for a kill somewhere, then I drop it and I try to get at least two towers from it. And that makes it definitely worth. If you've already got the outer towers as well, this is the way to open up the base and take a very early inhib tower. That is a ton of gold for you, but it also opens up the map massively. Their jungle isn't going to be safe anymore. You can roam more freely, catch them where they don't have vision, and that is how you really win a game. I get a lot of people say to me that I win lane, but I can't really do anything after that point. And the short answer is that if you get the Rift Herald, that does it pretty much for you. The final thing that I want to talk about is using your slash mute all. It's as sad as it actually sounds. I feel like muting everybody to concentrate is better if you want to improve or climb. You waste time being distracted by people or talking to them when you could be focused. And honestly, it's a lot more fun of a game, in my opinion, when you can't read what people are saying. I feel like every season people just talk even more. And they're so sensitive now as well, sitting there in their diapers. So it's best to leave them alone. Definitely communicate with your pings. That is really important. You can still type what you think you should do as well. But you don't have to worry about somebody tilting and just flaming everybody else like play your own game you obviously don't have to do this final tip but for purely climbing i have found this helps way way more so that is going to wrap up my six tips for season nine solo queue some of this you probably already know but just to reinforce like these six things are really important if you do every one every single game you're probably going to win a lot more let me know what you think of this style of video thank you for watching i'm not going to drag this on any longer so enjoy the rest of your climb enjoy your weekend thank you for watching and i'll catch you next time